Hikari operates a little differently from Discord.py in some instances. So Discord.py had a command handler built in, Hikari does not, and this is where um, external command handlers come in. In the next few videos of this supplementary Hikari tutorial series, we're going to be looking at different command handlers and how they work. Um, you know, the next two videos are specifically how to create a bot and actually just get a bot going using these command handlers. So this video is light bulb, the next video would be tangent, and then beyond that it will go into extensions slash modules depending on the library you use. Um, and it'll, it'll just kind of go on from there. Of course, if you find the video helpful at any point, then consider liking to let me know and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos like this. But yeah, with that out of the way, let's get into it. So before we can actually get started building our bot, there is two steps of extra setup that we need to do. So the first of which we actually need to install all the libraries that we want to install. And this is just kind of a bare bones bot, so we don't need to install a huge amount. Um, but with our light bulb bot specifically, we need to install uh, Hikari. We need to install Hikari, uh, whoops, light bulb. Uh, and if you're not on Windows, you can install UV loop. I'll come back to the UV loop in a second, but I want to talk about the Hikari install first. So there is kind of a separate install for Hikari you can do. So this just installs, you know, all the base stuff, you know, everything just completely normal. However, you can install, and I don't know how well this works on Windows actually, uh, but you can install extra libraries to make it, you know, a bit faster using Hikari speedups. Hikari Lightbulb is our command handler. It's not just Lightbulb. If you try and do pip install Lightbulb, I believe it will install something else. So don't do that. And UV loop. Uh, so I said it didn't install on Windows. I mean, it just straight up doesn't install on Windows at all. It not only doesn't run, it doesn't install. So if you're on, you know, Windows Substance of Linux, straight Linux, or, you know, uh, Mac OS, or any other Unix slash POSIX, whatever the hell they're supposed to be called operating systems. I heard recently that Unix isn't the correct um, terminology for, for Linux slash Mac OS. I don't know, someone say in the comments if I'm right or wrong about that. Um, the UV loop is essentially just a faster async IO loop per se, uh, but it doesn't work on Windows. So we can install all this and it will install quite a lot. So we're using Hikari 1.0.0.dev103, Lightbulb 1.5.2, and UV loop 0.16 uh, for this. Obviously, when you know the full series comes out, it will have you know more stable versions of Hikari and everything like that. But for now, in the supplementary, you know Dev 103 is pretty stable. You know, not a huge amount is going to be changing anytime soon, so it's it's fine to use really. The second bit of setup involves actually heading back to our um, development portal and getting our bots token. So we come into our bot here. We go to bot and then we click copy. And now we have our token on the clipboard, so we can move that back. And we can create a new folder called secrets. Inside that folder, create a new file called token and paste our token in there. Now this token will be regenerated before you see this video, don't worry about that. Um, but this is essentially your bot's password to everything. If someone gets a hold of this, then your bot is basically done for. It's in their hands now. Um, the only way you can you can fix this is by regenerating the token, which you can do by clicking this button here. So once you click that button, your token will be regenerated and your other token will be completely and entirely useless. So the one that's on the screen now will be entirely useless by the time you see this. Don't worry if your editor puts in a new line when saving like mine does, we will be accounting for that as well. So we can now close that file and actually start creating the bot. So we can uh, create a new folder uh, this is generally the name of your bot itself. So if you wanted to call your bot Henry, then you would, you know, name this folder Henry. Our bot is called Testbot, so we're just going to call it Testbot for simplicity's sake. And we're going to create two files in here. So we're going to create an init.py file, and that is two underscores either side of init. And uh, uh, not just one, as some people tend to get confused by. And then a main, again, two underscores either side of main.py. Our init isn't going to have a huge amount of information in it. <laughs> Get it? In it? In it? No? Okay, fine. <laughs> um, but it is it is a good place to store stuff like the version number, if you wanted to do version tracking, um, or, you know, your guild ID, if you wanted to do some stuff with guilds. Now, there is a good reason why you would want to do this even with a multi-server bot. Uh, those reasons won't become apparent immediately. I will talk about those more once we you know, actually start talking about extensions, I'm probably gonna do some really quick supplementaries on extensions. 
uh, and components and stuff in both light bulb and tangent. So we'll talk about that then because that's when that's important. But I'll recommend just having if you have if your bot has a test guild, then you'll want to put that here, and you can call this whatever you want. If test guild ID is more you know uh, better for you, then go for it. So now we're going to go with the main. That's all we need the init for. And in here we actually need to, uh, you know, this is where uh, we're going to create the bot. So we need to import OS, then we need to import Hikari, and then we need to import light bulb. And we don't import Hikari light bulb, the namespace just uses light bulb. And the first thing we need to do is actually, you know, load our token. So we're going to do with open slash dot slash, I don't know why I said slash originally, I meant to say the bracket, but whatever. Uh, or the quote or whatever I was typing at the time. So we you know, open the file part of our secrets as F, and then we can have token. I'm putting just an underscore in there to make it a bit more hidden to the environment. Uh, although it probably doesn't make a huge amount of difference. Then we're gonna do F dot read, and then we're gonna dot, dot split. So this dot split gets rid of that new line character at the end. So it basically just makes sure it loads it in whatever situation. And we're gonna create our bot, which is gonna be our light bulb dot bot. Uh, sorry, light bulb dot bot capital B. Uh, token equals underscore token uh, and then we're actually going to put stuff on new lines in here and then we're going to do also uh, from dot import guild ID I believe that should work fine uh, although actually if you want to make it more precise you'd use from test bot import guild ID so you have token equals underscore token and then you have your prefix which is only used for message commands, uh, you know, slash commands obviously don't use custom prefixes. And then you can have your intents. So this kind of depends on what intents you actually gave your bot to begin with. I gave um, my bot all intents on a developer portal. So I'm gonna be doing hikari.intents.all. I recommend uh, reading the documentation on this um, if you need other sets of intents because I don't remember exactly how it works because um, I only ever build single server bots, so I just shove all the intents on them. Uh, so, you know, uh, if you need other sets of intents, then make sure to check documentation for that. And then we're also going to supply default enabled guilds equals guild ID. Uh, and we're not going to be talking about this one just yet, um, because this one is only really required when you're dealing with uh, slash commands. Um, also, I implemented this. I hate to blow my own trumpet, but I implemented that. <laughs> Uh, I don't know why the intents isn't appearing in purple. It definitely goes in there. Um, how how awfully bizarre. But anyway, that works. And now we need to actually, you know, load our extensions. So we could do bot.load extensions from. Extensions from, come on, there we go. <laughs> Thought that was selected. And we could do dot slash test bot slash extensions. Now this directory doesn't exist at the moment. Uh, if you wanted to make sure it did exist, um, you know, before we actually load anything, we can use must exist equals true. By default, it's false. And if we had subdirectories inside there, be recursive equals true. By default, again, it's false. But essentially, this will scan. You know, if we created, say, an extensions folder in here, uh, it would scan this directory for all Python files that don't start with an underscore, and it would load, you know, each and every extension from that folder. It's just a nice little shortcut. Uh, method that I also contributed. Uh, these two things are my two contributions to Lightbulb and the Hikari project as a whole. And they're both in this video. How wonderful. I'm not I'm not just blowing my trumpet, I'm blowing my tuba as well at this point. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, to actually start the bot, we can then use if name equals main, and we'll come back to events in a wee tick. I just want to get the bot up running first. Uh, so you can have if os.name does not equal nt, and this is what I was talking about, the uv loop. So we now import uh, uv loop and then uv loop dot install. And it's just, you know, this is all you have to do with, you, uh, with uv loop. You don't have to touch it again. It just makes things nice. But again, only works on Mac OS and Linux. Um, if you are developing on Windows, it is worth having this check and having all this in because if you, if you ever host the bot, you're going to be hosting on Linux server realistically. So you are going to want this check so you don't have to know, you know, oh, I'm hosting Linux now, I've got to rewrite all this code. Then this check does that all for you. So it is entirely worth having this in. Um, after that, we could just hit bot.run. 
or sorry, type dot uh, bot run. Bring up the console, and then we don't do anything like Python, um, you know, testbot.py like we did, you know, in the previous series. For example, we had a launcher.py file. We actually need to run it as a module, which is pretty simple. We just do dash m testbot, and it loads up. Uh, my and then and then my token errors. So I not put the correct token in there. Okay, I've seen the problem. I've seen the problem. I'm an idiot. You see this split? This is supposed to be strip. <laughs> So this strip removes the new lines, not the split. I'm I'm an idiot. I'm sorry, but now it, yeah, now it runs perfectly fine. <laughs> uh, we can go to our Discord server real quick, and we can actually see that the test bot is online. Yay! Uh, if you wanted to do some stuff in events, then that much is fairly simple. So if you say you wanted to send a message to a specific channel, whenever your bot started up. We can get, well first things first, we can actually get, uh, say this standard out channel that I tend to use for this sort of stuff. Shove it in our init, so we can do standard out channel ID. And this, uh, you know, your unit is good for like a temporary configuration type thing. I don't know if I'm gonna use that style of configuration in the series, but you know, for a supplementary video, it's perfectly fine. Uh, so we can have bot.listen. Oh, also, before I forget, we actually need to import that in, like that. And then we need to listen for a hakari.starting event. And then we can do, say, on, not on starting, on started. So this is the functional equivalent of on ready in discord.py. So we can have on started, and then we have our events, which, you know, is the same, hakari.started event. And that returns none. Uh, and then all we really want to do is just a uh, event dot. Well, actually, we could just do bot. I think. Uh, wait, bot dot fetch channel. I believe I'm doing this correctly, or is it bot dot? It might be bot dot rest dot fetch channel. Uh, send out channel ID. Dot send. Actually, we need to do a. Uh, I used to then go in. Uh, brackets, and then we need to do a wait. And dot sends, uh, hello. It might be, you know, slightly better to <laughs> to do uh, to do that on two uh, on two separate lines. But you know, the point is that the test bot now says hello when it starts up. If you did want to do it on two lines, actually, I should probably show you how to do that. Really, rather than doing all this mess. Uh, so we just have like you know a variable called channel that we set like this. And channel send hello, and then when we start it up again, it should work the same way. There we go. So we got another hello. Okay, so I just realised that I forgot to talk about something. The recording session is still going, so this isn't editing me. This is still recording me, but it's slightly in the future me, after having already set up the tangent video and then having to unset that all up again, uh, to be able to to quickly show you this. Uh, we won't run anything because I don't need to run anything. But I just wanted to show you the optimization flags. I completely forgot to talk about them. Um, so you remember we ran the bot using you know Python dash M test bot. Well, there are other flags you can use as well. We can stick them on the end or anywhere you want, and this uses the capital O. So you could do dash O for single level optimization and dash double O for double level optimization, and then these just kind of uh, clean up the code a little bit, make everything run a little bit faster. You know the name, oh sorry, the clue is in the name optimization. You know. Uh, but one important thing to know, if your bot's help, for example, relies on doc strings and you're only going to want one O, that's the second O removes stuff like doc strings from the code. Uh, so if you're going to need doc strings in there for whatever reason, if you're doing docs, um, like documentation, then you only need the doc strings when building the docs, you don't need when running, so that's fine. But again, you know, if, if it's like the help text, for example, that needs to be uh, got live, then you know, you can only have one O, but ultimately you normally have two. If you want to, and that just kind of uh, makes everything just work a little bit nicer. But yeah, I'll hand it back to past me to wrap up the video now. So that is a really quick rundown into getting a bot, you know, up and running in Hakari using Lightbulb. There will be another video in a few days on how to do the same thing using Tangent. It is a little bit more complicated. Um, so, you know, just keep that in mind when selecting which to use, but obviously you can just use either. In the actual main series itself, we will be using Lightbulb. So if you are planning on following that series, then you may or may not want to watch the Tangent series and you might want to continue, um, you know, with Lightbulb itself. So, you know, when the series comes along, you can 
you have a bit of a head start on it. But yeah, ultimately all the supplementary videos are there to help people kind of work out what they're doing when they're switching and then the tutorial series will kind of answer a lot more things, um, you know, once everything's in proper like. Uh, but yeah, that's everything I wanted to talk about. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below, or you can join the Discord server using the link in the description. While I'm at it, I would like to thank my amazing patrons on screen now. One pound a month and you can be on that screen too. And I will see you next time where, well, it'll probably be um, loading the, uh, the tangent bot and getting all that up and running. So I'll see you for that.